I want to put the idea of Billy Bishop beside another brilliant and wonderful play, Half-Life, that you're also wonderful and brilliant in. And I, in Billy Bishop, I see the actor and I see the performer. I see the accents. I see the characters whipping out as you describe them. Half-Life seemed to be the antithesis of that, that whether it was the way Daniel directed it or John Mighton wrote it, it was a powerful stripped down stripping of all the kind of that kind of color and this guy was left and this love affair. Did you have a hard time getting into that kind of Mighton space, the John Mighton space? Of no, I think that that was a process that was started when I first worked with Daniel in the designated order and suffered a nervous breakdown in consequence, almost. Because, and I would say, and that was, um, it had to do with what you're talking about. It's a different way of acting, different approach to it that isn't there. Now, the presentational aspect of Billy Bishop Goes to War, for example, the telling of the story, there is implied in that, that old Canadian tradition of, you know, my Aunt Jean said, oh, my, aunt, my, aunt, my, aunt, my uncle Harry came in, you know, that, <coughs> you know, it's a kind of, it's a natural kind of presentational way to yarn to people. And that play right. is an expansion on that, but essentially that, you've got a character that's telling a story. As opposed to a character who's not telling a story, he's living in a story. Which, right. And so, but I would think, like there's Danny Brooks, and there's Jason Byrne I've talked about, um, um, McLaren, um, the Scottish director when I did Hamlet. Right. Again, a different, and in my later years as an actor, that's been my terror and my pain, but also so rewarding to learn or to be working with a director that is helps that way or and I, so half life and the same with the designated mourner it would be Danny Brooks if I hadn't been in that play with Daniel Brooks I wouldn't have been able to act in that way I wouldn't have known about it I wouldn't have tried to do it so what did Daniel say how did he I can't remember now but again he just it couldn't be on this other level he would then, you know, and, and again, who knows how direct, like, there is, all those directors I've named do not work by you should do it this way or do it that way or this is what it is. It has more to do with bringing something out of you and allowing you to be brave. Because when you're acting in a different way like that, you don't think it's good acting. You think you're fucking up. You think you're failing. And so you need to be reassured and guided. And, and I mean, that's so much in, in performance, is getting people to feel confident and brave. Because that's our stock and trade. We want them to feel confident and brave. And again, I'm getting back to that. So, And lots of directors don't work that way at all. They, they, in fact, they the opposite. I need you to stand in the doorway on that. Yeah, yeah, can they, you come down and the yeah, table? Or don't that say one. it that way. Or you're yeah. going, what the can fuck? Can you emphasize the end of the word there? You know, so all you're thinking about is what the director said. You're not... And so that this whole element of pretending in play gets, gets stifled, it seems to me, by these dictators, these fascists, you know? <laughs> you know? And there's, I mean, and there's a lot of, like, then it's the audience. I want them to see it this way. And the kind of the ego behind that, they're like, they're, you know, there's all these little dictators about, I will make them see and do and feel these things because I am a great director. Now, that's one way of directing, I'm sure, and there's a lot of it goes on. Have you worked but, with those directors? Yeah. I, <laughs> and, you know, and, and always felt that I was up. You never worked at Stratford. Did you work at Stratford? I did only once, tangentially. Uh, that was the um, Fellini radio plays, um, uh, directed by an Italian director. You never worked for Robin Phillips. No. You never worked for Michael Lang. No. You never I've worked heard for many those stories about directors, no. so and I've worked with many, many actors who have worked with those directors. Did you regret not having that part of your career? I'm sorry, I've always <laughs> felt I dodged a bullet, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I thought they may have, and they may be wonderful directors, and they may have had, the right. actors I know had wonderful experiences with them, but for me, every instinct in me says, I would have had a terrible time with them. Because Did your head I, say one thing and your gut say another? 
No, I mean, do you I, think I, go, I, well, I, I really would like to be in no. tights on stage and in her voice going, no, 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 leave, no, leave, leave, leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty well enjoyed. My, for example, oh, McLaren doing Hamlet. Right. Now, there was a way of doing Hamlet right. that, that I got to use. You know, I could be. So the question is does Eric regret not being involved in those classics in whatever way? Seems, seems oh, no, I, I don't, I, not in the way they did it, but again. But, uh, you know, going from my, we will make the plays out of the very kind of soil that I have here. And if no one has written them, we will, I will eat the soil and out will come this. Well, no, I've gone through, because you've got what? You've got Glengarry Glen Ross here. Yeah. So I have come to the point to go, no, a good play. And it's been fun to play in the, these other plays, as an, just as an actor in that way. Not a creator, not a collective, just trying to, but bringing who I am and a kind of Canadian experience, it, even though I'm trying to do a, you know, a Chicago accent or something like that. And I don't make it. And, but to do the classics or Shakespeare, I go, for Christ's sake, no wonder they're around these plays. They don't have to be done in a certain way, but they're, they're relevant because they were plays written and people haven't fucking changed. So they can be applied to us. And in fact, the classics, we're dealing with themes that are very applicable and will always be applicable to the five stories that you talked about at one point, I think when I was interviewing you. <laughs> but then today, Jim, Jim Lino phoned you up in 2000 and said, Eric, we really want you to come down and play uh, whatever, Antonio or whatever his name in Measure for Measure. Would you do it? Well, not, I, I, I'm not, not, I've never worked for Anthony Cimolino, and I don't, but if Chris Abraham directing there wanted me to do something, I would consider it, because that's a director that I like to work, you know, that I can, my experience with him has been of this other, that there's something for me to, to learn from him, and that, that I, don't, I don't even, it's not even that. It's this, this is just a way of working that I feel comfortable in and therefore have the possibility of doing something well. And when and another director, I go, I don't think I'm going to even get that possibility to do something well because I, I think I'm going to be too much at cross purposes or too intimidated or too insecure in that situation to work. I think it's important to know people uh, and to that's a, you know, a good enough reason to do a project in a way, as opposed to just, just the project, who's doing it? So then how are we going to approach it? And again, my overall general one is, we don't know how we're going to do it. We're going to start rehearsal and then we'll find out. And I'm not that comfortable going, no, it's been designed, it's been, and the, you know, and we've been working on it for months, and you're just going to come in now for four weeks and learn the lines, and then it's going to, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not sure that that's going to be as much fun to me. I like it when everybody, the designer and everybody's there on the first day, I don't know how we're going to light it, I don't know how we're going to dress it, I don't know how we're going to act it, we don't even know what it's about at this point. But we're going to find all those things out, and that will be the performance. Do you like the risk? You're not careful. Well, I, like those, again, I use it in that that big sense of the word. You're comfortable with risk because well, I'm not comfortable. And I don't like it. I I suffer terrible nerves and 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 fear, and yet I go. Terry Sawchuck, the goalie, used to throw up before every time yeah, he yeah, played. Yeah, you go. The this is just if, if you don't, if you don't like this, then do something else. Yeah. And there's no. And I don't care how big the star or how much they, who they are, we see everybody goes through it. It's part and parcel of the territory. And there's, you know, and it's just, and it's not so much about fear, it's about where you are in a process. I mean, I used to just think I was a scary cat, we got too scared about it. But actually, actually the fear, it has to do with, it's like a thermometer. Where am I in the process? And meaning? Meaning, well, I'm scared just before we open because I'm not quite sure what we're about here. Right. And again, I would go that our rehearsal periods, especially in live theater, they get shorter and shorter. You go, Jesus, that's totally the wrong way to go. You want longer and longer. Because the longer and longer you go, the more this fear and this inhibiting fear of freezing and not, and people get to play imaginatively and be there and be strong and fat. And that's what we're after.